Now, the world of cross-border payments is at a pivotal point. As the current system is reshaped by radical technology and new competition, there'll be inevitably winners and losers. And a new report by City is looking at the future of cross-border payments, identifying where we're going to see growth and how and who will be leading the change and how. And we're joined by one of the co-authors of that report, uh, David uh, Yanis, Global Clearing and FI Payments Head Treasury and Trade Solutions at City. Welcome to Cybus TV. Good morning. Another year, another city. Uh, I hope you've got the energy for the days ahead. I hope so too. <laughs> uh, now let's start. City have uh, published a paper on the future of cross-border payments. Can you tell us about it? Sure. So in the paper, we are discussing who is going to be moving the 250 trillion or so in cross-border payments five years from now. We know who is moving it today, but the players who are moving it today and the players who are going to be moving these funds down the road are going to be different because of the transformation which we see. And in the paper, we discuss with various industry experts, banks, fintechs, economists, what is the opportunity? What is driving that opportunity? And probably most importantly, what are the building blocks of a winning solution, of a solution which is going to allow to capture market share on the back of this transformation? And so why do this now? Why, why was this a good time to publish this kind of paper? Good question. The time is now because we see unprecedented level of change in this business, unprecedented pace of innovation. And I would categorize that innovation into revolutionary and evolutionary. The revolutionary is driven by new technologies, digital assets, DLT, who are looking to displace existing models. And uh, frankly, they do offer interesting new and unique features such as smart contracts, such as ability to decentralize, uh, decentralize accounting, decentralize uh, ledgers. But they are still looking for path to scale. Uh, at the same time, they certainly acted as a catalyst to accelerate innovation of, of legacy or traditional systems, which moved from, I would say, years of incremental innovation to that accelerated evolutionary innovation state. And we have seen a whole host of infrastructures moving to 24-7, instant settlement, primarily in domestic space, but we now see also more cross-border oriented infrastructure such as fed wire or chips considering moving to 24 7. so that's the landscape but the inhabitants of the landscape are also changing we have seen a host of new entrants over the last number of years entering that space primarily fintechs capturing share from incumbents based on the research which we have done about 40 percent of banks believe that they lost at least five percent of wallet share to fintechs already and staggering 89% believe that fintechs are going to capture at least 5% more in market share over the next five to 10 years. Mm. Okay, so certainly there's a lot going on in the cross-border payment space, but what would you say is driving this, this accelerated change? I would say that it always boils down back to the client. Clients' expectations have been conditioned in particular in domestic space to, to, kind of, to expect instant, frictionless, transparent, 24-7 experience when it comes to payments. And they expect the same in cross-border space, where obviously it is more challenging to deliver consistently these types of experiences. In addition to this transfer of expectations from domestic to cross-border, we see a transfer of expectations from consumers to corporations and SMEs. Sometimes we call it consumerization of our corporations. So these are, I would say, the key drivers here. But there is obviously a gap between that, these expectations and what can be delivered consistently to clients. And this is why this space attracts so many new technologies and so many new entrants, fintechs, who are trying to close that gap between expectations and what is the reality. I, I want to hone in on one of those. You talk about client expectations. Can you just talk a little bit more about that being a main driver? Sure. Uh, Again, coming back to the survey which we conducted ahead of the paper, uh, as we were conducting research for the paper, one of the questions was about clients' clients. We asked banks what your clients see as the main pain points um, in cross-border payments. And not surprisingly, the top three answers were cost, 
speed and transparency. And I would double click here a little bit on particular on speed and on transparency because there is a little bit to unpack here. On speed, it's not just about the instant experience, but it also it is also about 24/7 availability. And as I mentioned, infrastructures are already moving in that direction. At CT, we view this as absolutely strategic to make sure that we develop our capabilities and our own systems towards the 24/7, 365 availability. Ten months ago, we launched 24/7 uh, US drug clearing on treasury payments. We have now more than 100 clients actively using this solution, and we continue to enhance it now. Uh, recently, we, we introduced also commercial payments on that. Now, going back to transparency, back on the, ba on the back of SWIFT GPI, launched in 2017, we have made substantial progress when it comes to post facto transparency, but there's still a lot to be desired when it comes to upfront transparency, including upfront transparency on fees, often deducted from the principal. And again, with City, we are trying to tackle that through solutions such as Confirm Value Transfer, which we recently launched. Mm. So coming back to the point of shifting wallet share distribution, what challenges are doing so well to, to win share and what incumbents need to do to, to counter this offensive? Yes, again, good question. I would say in B2B space, uh, banks are still doing quite well, but where it is consumer initiating the payment in C2B or C2C, this is where fintechs are capturing substantial share. And there are two elements, I would say, of a winning solution. Uh, first is that the challengers realize that cross-border payments is no longer a commodity. There are multiple ways to process a payment from country, where, country A to, to country B. And those winning solutions offer the best possible option or even better multiple options for that, um, for that execution of such cross-border payments. And at Citi, we believe that it should be as simple for the sender to send cross-border payments as it is for domestic payments. And that's, why, that's the philosophy with which, we're, with which we build our network. We are connected to more than 250 FMIs to deliver that multitude of choices to, to our clients. So that's the kind of you know, the what of the solution, but the how is also very important. And it's all about delivering very slick, user-friendly, digital-first, digital often built on APIs, user interface. Very slick solution delivering consistently very seamless experience. Hey, on its face, it sounds like the keys to success are, are very commonsensical. So what is preventing uh, some of the players from, from executing? So I think it all boils down to the fact that technology dollars, technology resources are not unlimited. And there is a lot, as I mentioned, happening industry-wide already uh, with a lot of mandatory, for the right reasons, projects such as transition to ISO. So banks have to make a decision what to build in-house, which capabilities to build in-house, which capabilities to borrow through partnerships. And at City, we are very aware of that challenge. We recently launched a set of solutions which allow our clients to immediately elevate their underlying clients' cross-border payments experiences without the need for implementation, without the need for, for this investment spend. But we are also working with a number of banks on more involved API-based connection, which allow them to take full advantage of City Network to deliver maximum choice to their underlying clients. David, we so appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. David Yanis is the Global Clearing and FI Payments Head and Treasury and Trade Solutions at City. Thanks so much for being with us here at Cybos TV. Thank you.